Hello and welcome to episode 6 of your financial wellness webinars brought to you by Bank Bentuk. We last ended on the topic of savings, that was episode 5. And often savings and investments are spoken about interchangeably, but they are actually two very different topics when it comes to financial wellness and they cater for completely different needs. So where savings is really concerned with the short-term end of your money management, investments is really concerned with the long-term end. The short-term end really focuses on ensuring that you have liquidity available when you need it most, especially to cater for unexpected expenses. And in order to have that flexibility, you pay quite a price, the price of reward. And this is really where you have the opportunity of making money in the long term when we look at investing. When we look at investing, we consider a certain number of elements that are extremely important to bear in mind. The first is the risk. There is a risk that is inherent in the investment. And then there is the risk that you could lose money. So that's the potential loss that you might face. And then there's also the risk relative to you in terms of your own profile. What are you willing to lose? Are you someone who understands that investments have a tendency to work over a very long term period and therefore you're willing to deal with a bit of short term volatility? You don't mind if you lose a little bit of money in the short term, knowing that in the long term, in the long run, you will be able to not only make up that loss, but far exceed your own expectations with some very good long term returns relative to your investment. Risk is not the only thing to consider. You also need to consider your time horizon. How long are you willing to invest for? You'll recall in the savings segment, we spoke about risk reward. And in that relationship, we determined that the shorter the term, the more interested you are in the return of your investment. In other words, the return of the capital that you've put in. And yes, you'd be very lucky if you do get a bit of interest on that. When it gets to the long term, you are far more interested in the return on your investment. So you really want to see in return for giving up the use of this money now, what is it that I can get in the long term? When markets aren't doing well, our first reaction is actually an emotional one. We have a tendency to be afraid of what might happen, of the potential loss that we might experience. And that's okay, that's, that's totally normal. It's absolutely human to be afraid when you see something going up and down and left and right. The challenge is only when we take our decisions based on how we feel. If we take a decision in a moment where markets are doing badly, a potential loss can turn into an actual loss, which means that at the end of the day, the short term volatility that would turn around thanks to the time that you would be willing to keep your investment going disappears in favor of a quick once off decision to access the funds because of the fear of things getting even worse than they already are. So the time horizon when it comes to your investments is key, very important. And it should be at least five years long, if not longer, depending on what your goal is. So what is your goal? Is your goal to retire financially independent 30 years from now? Is your goal to ensure that your children's post high school education is catered for and all you have left is another five years before they go to university? Would you like to purchase a new home? Will you be renovating your home in the next five to 10 years? Are you interested in investing in another property, an investment property, for example? And all of these answers to these questions would then determine what is the type of investment that you would take. It's that clear, compelling purpose, that clarity on your goal that will keep you going through the challenging times. Now, where are you going to invest? Are you going to invest in bonds? Are you going to invest in shares or equities? Um, will you be investing in property? And are you going to be looking at a hard asset or are you going to look at the type of a pooled investment, for example, that gives you access to the same industry, but without you having to have loads and loads and loads of money um, and having, to, having the challenge of needing to realize an asset at a given point in time when markets might not be favorable. So what do I mean by that? Often when we're looking at a hard asset, let's say we've purchased a property or we've purchased gold, now you need the funds. It's important to be aware that when it comes to hard assets, they take a little longer to realize. 
They tend to appreciate in value over time. And when you need to access the funds, it's critically important to be clear how much time you might need before the funds are provided to you. So all these give you a sense of the different types of assets that you can look at when it comes to investing. And the wonderful thing about investing is that it gives you access to what we call compound interest. Compound interest often being referred to as the eighth wonder of the world. Because what happens with compound interest is you not only earn interest on your principal amount that you've invested, but further on the interest previously earned on that same asset or on that same principal. So in essence, you are earning interest upon interest. Now, for some of you, this might all seem really pie in the sky and um, almost like, you know, a utopia of the wonderful world that would exist if only you had the money to put away regularly. And for some, when you look at investments, you consider that you need some really, really big amounts to get started. And this is not the case. Depending on the type of investment that you choose, you could start with as little as $200 million a month. You could look at a unit trust investment for the long term with a good aggressive profile that takes into account different types of assets that have um, in the past or generally have a tendency to give you a good return over the long term. Um, and that would form the basis of your investment. When would you look at a lump sum? A lump sum may be when you have um, received some kind of windfall. Perhaps you would like to put away some of your bonus towards something long term. When you have a very clear goal that you're planning for over the long term, you might have a lump sum available that you want to put away to earn that, that return for you. So when you look at investments, it's important to be clear once again on your purpose. What is your goal? Be clear on your time horizon. Remember that when it comes to investments, the time horizon is rather long. So you're looking at a period of at least five years and it can go as long as 20 or 30 years, depending on what precisely you are planning for. And let's not forget the risk inherent in the investment, as well as the risk in your own profile. Some people are more conservative than others and are unable to stomach the short-term volatility that necessarily exists in markets. If that's who you are, you might want to be a bit more cautious in terms of the kind of investments that you are going to look at. Let's consider, for example, government bonds that are generally considered as a very safe investment, which gives you good nominal interest over varying periods. The only challenges there being that your investment might be locked in and you might not have access to it as and when you need it. It would be really challenging to try and get all types of investments into a short bite-sized webinar of five to 10 minutes but you can do your own research and have a look at what other types of investments exist in the universe. And when you look at Namibia and Southern Africa, just consider that we make up about 1% of the entire investment universe. So having a look at investments that go a little bit further than just our countries also provides you with some good diversification, which is extremely important when it comes to investments. I'm sure you've heard of the expression, do not put all your eggs in one basket. And when it comes to investments, this is exactly where you need to look at a few different baskets. What's your basket for education? What's your basket for retirement? What's your basket in terms of leaving a legacy for those who remain after you? And there again, important to, to think about how long you would be investing for. A word of caution, look out for get-rich-quick schemes. If it seems too good to be true, it generally is. And for most of us, to make good money when it comes to investments, you've got to be willing to be in it for the long haul. Right now, our economy is extremely challenging. We face interest rates that increase so, so regularly, and you become very uncomfortable with the monthly repayment you might have on a great hard asset such as your home or an investment property. How would you deal with that? We often advise that whenever it is that you enter into a loan, to not budget to the last bit. So hopefully when you took out your mortgage bond, it was a manageable debt, a debt that doesn't constitute more than 30% of your disposable income, as a good example. Now, if you are paying back on your bond the exact amount that you owe on a monthly basis, then a small differential in the interest rate can have a huge impact on your monthly repayment. You might find yourself going from the ease of paying it on a monthly basis without a problem 
to being very uncomfortable and wondering how you are going to make up the difference now that the interest rate has increased. A word of advice, whenever possible, pay a little bit extra on your mortgage bond. Why do we say so? Because interest rates rise. And when they do, that can have a huge impact on your day-to-day -day expenses. This is where many of us become uncomfortable, forget to answer phone calls when our, our creditors are calling us because we've budgeted to the last cent. So when we pay a little bit more, it makes it a lot easier for us to absorb small changes in interest rates without impacting our day-to-day -day living. Until next time, remember not to be run by your emotions, but rather to be run by your goals and your time horizon.